Big Software will help improve your business. It streamlines processes and helps make people more efficient. Warnings. As with all software, implement small pieces at a time to gain benefits without suffering adverse reactions. Big Software requires you to change your business to the way it wants you to work. Big Software may take a long time before you notice any benefits. Do not try to load Big Software on existing servers. Big Software requires big hardware. Do not plan any vacations during Big Software implementations. Do not plan any long weekends. Do not plan any special nights out or family events. Expect to spend a lot of time implementing Big Software. Think of Big Software as your new best friend. Do not try to support Big Software with existing resources. Plan and budget for lots of new people. You might need some more office space and a small army of consultants, too. Do not try to modify Big Software. It may become brittle. Do not try to upgrade Big Software. Big Software doesn't like to be upgraded. Do not go near users of Big Software before, during, or after implementation. They may be hostile. If you feel strong thoughts about harming the software, your hardware, your consultants, the software vendor, your boss, your users, or yourself, consider moving away from Big Software to a more manageable solution. Software products are a critical business tool that can help you improve your business. But there is a better way than traditional big software implementations. Watch PLM 411 to hear about a new approach to PLM. Hi and welcome to PLM 411, where we help manufacturers understand how they can improve and accelerate product innovation and product development. I'm Jim Brown with Tech Clarity, and today I'm joined with uh, joined by Martin Hansman, the CEO of a very cool company, uh, Oyo Sports, and uh, we're going to talk to him a little bit about some of the great challenges, good challenges to have through growth, and uh, and also how PLM can help with those. So. Um, as we talked before, I was just really, really impressed with the, you know, first of all, it's just, again, congratulations, such a cool company, uh, but the, the growth that uh, you've been facing, uh, but also the complexity in terms of what you do and managing, uh, you know, all of the different products you bring to market. Uh, so maybe you can just share a little bit about that with us. Yeah, thanks. And thanks for having me on the show, Jim. Um, Oil Sports is a, is a relatively new company. It's been in existence for um, a little under three years. We launched an e-commerce business um, about nine months ago, and this really led us to rethink what our company is all about. Um, we manufacture many figures that are licensed by the various leagues, and today we have figures that are licensed by the baseball, the football, and, and the hockey leagues, but yeah. clearly we're going to go further than that. and. You know, there's a lot of complexity there that isn't necessarily visible to the surface. You're, you're buying a little figure, it's very cool, it can move around and do things for you, but managing literally thousands of items, and, and we add hundreds of items every month to that um, in a way that is um, congruent with the licensing that we have to do with the, yeah. the various leagues, and they all have their own peculiar peculiarities and rules on how we, we actually achieve that. Um, very quickly made me realize that although we had a, a sophisticated e ERP system and a, a very excellent um, e-commerce engine that went with right. that, and we, we could use an end-to-end -end experience on that, um, what we didn't have was really a product lifecycle management tool. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we went the first year without that and we started putting together a vision of what we really felt was missing in the way we were managing our business and also in um, our ability to continue to scale at the, the level that we wanted to scale. Yeah, and maybe you can just share a little bit uh, and then maybe we can go through those few challenges we, you know, we talked about, but uh, a little bit about the vertical integration and how quickly you can turn around a new a new product because I think most of the people would be pretty impressed with uh, the turnaround. We're in the sports business, and you know there are things that happen every day, and really that's what our sports fans are all about. They're about being excited about those events, and we want them to share that excitement with them. And what we do is we create product um, on a, not necessarily daily basis, but definitely on a weekly basis around these kinds of events. So, for example, we just had the Stanley Cup. Right. Many of you probably saw that. And um, one of the things that we were able to do is get product out that was very specific to the winning Kings yeah. um, six hours after the completion of that game. Yeah. And, you know, for us, that's what fan engagement is about. Getting that product to a fan 
five days later just right. isn't the same as getting it out. So you had to wait. Day. You had to wait through the whole double overtime and everything just to just to get the uh, the play to get the final so. to get the final <laughs> result on that. But you know, I think you know that, that's where then the complexity. In order to achieve that, we have to be very vertically integrated. We actually yeah. have just started a process. We've moved all our manufacturing to the U.S. We we mold our own plastic now. We make our own packaging. We die cut it. We sit there and, and sleeve it. We do everything from top to bottom within our own facility at this point. And, and that is where the complexity is. Yeah. And um, when you're that vertically integrated, adding all of the new items, you need to have a way of managing that, it, that that's much more sophisticated than simply a bill of materials. Well, and you've got your version, your versions that you were telling us about before in terms of generations and those sorts of things. I mean, it's you know, some relatively unique challenges. Yeah, we, we um, have something that's a little bit different than most people would use in a PLM. We have a generational concept that might be considered a normal version control with, with other engineering type of um, companies. But what we also have is we have player series. So let's take a David Ortiz. You know, we would come up with a new um, generation of, of a player once a year, but within that year, we might have six, eight, 10, 15 different series of that player. Right. Now, if he gets traded, of course, we have to follow that along to the other leagues and we have to manage the licensing. So if, as we right. follow through the, the different teams, you know, there are different um, potential rules that are involved. We've right. got Hall of Fame that can come into play for players that have retired. Um, so there's a lot of complexity city there that, that we need to manage very, very closely with regard to each player that we have. Yeah, well, and, and the, the bills and material, I know that you're, you're man, because you're vertically integrated, you've got artwork, packaging, Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's not a simple... No, I mean, and, and being able to do this cost effectively and as right. much as anything speed, you know, we have on, on something like um, the Stanley Cup, we had to release approximately 20 players um, six hours after completion of the game. That needs automation okay. and PLM is a way for us to really achieve a level of automation that you cannot achieve through simple use of an ERP system. Yeah. Um, and for us that means that we have to automate the imaging portion of it to get the, the, the relevant images um, as well as the bill of materials that, right. that drive this. And, and you know, for all of these, it's a brand new item essentially that we sell each time because it's subtly different than the one we sold two days ago, for example. Right, and I mean, it, it, it ties back to the licensing right. and, and everything, right. so that, that uh, the so interrelationships exactly. and managing all right. of that. Uh, and then, you know, and certain types of events, like an all-star game, there are rules around how long we're able to continue to sell an, an item that is associated with that particular event, and yeah. we have to manage that. And that's another thing where PLM, of course, will help us manage that life cycle. Yeah, us. so it's interesting. There, there are lots of sort of standard PLM problems, and you're, you're doing some pretty cool standard PLM things in terms of you know, managing bills, materials, and revisions, and 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 those things. But you've got your own little nuances. So it sounds like you know, it's uh, you, you had to take advantage of a little bit of flexibility too. And uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we also happen to use our PLM tool for quality uh, management processes as okay. well. It does that fairly well. I mean, you've right. got a document version management tool typically with most PLM products, and and so we leverage it that way as well. That's fantastic. Listen, thank you for coming in and uh, continued best of luck with the business. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Chuck Sanderson trying to stop it with wide and Keenan. Clear to Bucknado. Bobby Orr. Behind the net to Sanderson. Orr! 